fun size spooks. Portland Shanghai Tunnels. Most old families from Portland, Oregon, have a story about a long lost relative who was Shanghaied. For us, it was our uncle, Michael Quayla, who disappeared in the 1890s. Mike, flush from his job on a fishing boat, saddled up to a bar on a Friday night. He enjoyed a few glasses of beer and maybe a few shots of whiskey, but the liquor seemed to be having more of an effect on him than usual. At the end of the night, as the tavern emptied out, Mike began to think about stumbling home. Just as he stood from his stool, the floor dropped out from under him and he plummeted down a narrow hole. Plunged into darkness, he hit the ground hard. When he awoke, his head throbbing and his pockets empty, he was aboard a ship in the Pacific Ocean headed to Asia. There he was forced into slave labor aboard the ship. At least, that's what we think happened. The practice of shanghaiing was widespread on the west coast of America in the late 1800s. With many sailors abandoning ship to seek their fortune in the gold rush, ships sailing out of port cities like San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle were woefully undercrewed. Enter the crooks who were happy to incapacitate men in bars or down dark alleys. They would rob the unfortunate target and sell him to a ship's captain, keeping his signing pay, called blood money, for themselves. The practice was also common in Britain and on the east coast of the U.S. where it was called crimping. But in the west, many of the ships were headed for Shanghai and other destinations in Asia, so the name Shanghaiing was born. There were several crime bosses who made their fame and fortune from this villainous practice. Two of the most well-known were Jim Shanghai Kelly of San Francisco, who threw himself a birthday booze cruise and invited many of his competitors in the trade. Once at sea, the bartender served opium-laced whiskey and 100 unconscious guests were offloaded onto three waiting ships. Joseph Bunko Kelly of Portland once sold a crew member who turned out to be a cigar store Indian statue. He served embalming fluid he had stolen from a mortuary to 22 men in his bar and sold their comatose bodies, though most of the men never woke up. Below the old city of Portland, you will find a network of dark and spooky interconnected tunnels that lead down to the docks along the Willamette River. These murky passages were built to allow businesses to move goods from the dock to their establishment without crowding up street traffic, but they were also ideal for all kinds of other skullduggery, chiefly the practice of shanghaiing. In the 1850s and 60s, Portland became the world capital of Shanghai, with some 1,500 people being captured each year. And it wasn't just young men who had to be careful. Women, too, were snatched and sold into prostitution. Congress combated this sinister practice with the Shipping Commission Act of 1872, which required that sailors had to sign onto a ship in the presence of a federal shipping commissioner. Some Shanghaiers continued to shirk the law and supply sailors for ships headed to the Yukon as late as the 1920s, but the widespread adoption of steam-powered vessels meant the number of sailors needed to crew a ship was drastically reduced, and the practice died out. Today, historic wood Paneled bars and restaurants in Old Portland proudly show their tunnel entrances and the passages have become a popular tourist attraction. But poor Uncle Mike was never heard from again. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon and help me make more horrifying videos. Patrons get cool perks like exclusive content, mentions in videos, and can even request video topics. A link to my Patreon is in the description. Thank you for watching and unpleasant dreams, darlings.